a world beyond time and space. People are so unconscious anything to keep their power and their respectability. Even if it means blowing up the whole world, they can risk anything to save their egos. And these are the people who naturally reach to the position of power because they are the only seekers for power. No creative, no intelligent person is interested in dominating others. His first interest is to know himself. So the people with the highest quality of intelligence move towards mysticism, towards a world beyond time and space. And the most mediocre go after the power. The power can be worldly and it can be of money. It can be of holding the spiritual dominion over millions of people. But the basic urge is to dominate more and more people. No creative, no intelligent person can ever seek power. His first interest is to know himself instead of dominating the others. His first interest is to know himself. As a result, people with highest quality of intelligence they move towards the world beyond time and space, towards mysticism, while the mediocre go after power. That power can be worldly, political, it can be of money, money is also power. It can be of holding a spiritual dominion over millions of people, but the basic urge is to dominate more and more people. The urge arises because you do not know yourself and not only that you do not know yourself but the problem becomes more complicated when you do not want to know that you do not know yourself. You go on pretending that you know yourself. You are so afraid of being aware of ignorance that prevails at the very center of your being. You escape from this darkness through these methods. Lust for money, lust for power, lust for respectability, honor, etc. A man who has darkness within can do anything destructive in order to maintain his dominion. Creativity is impossible for such a person. Because creativity comes from being conscious, a little more alert, light and love. Those who are creative in one way or the other, they are somewhat alert. Creativity is not interested in dominating anyone and to dominate for what? The other is other. Neither you want to dominate anyone, nor you want to be dominated by anyone. Freedom is the very taste of being, just a little alert. But these people are completely asleep. In their sleep, they are making all that causes destruction in the world. They are making nuclear weapons, bombs, not knowing what they are doing. Only one thing keeps them moving and that is more power and more. And whatsoever comes in their way has to be destroyed. They do not know anything else. This has to be understood. All the people that we have killed, for example, Jesus, Socrates, Ali Laj Mansur, Sarmat, are immensely respected after they have been killed. Sarmat salam, I have spoken to you about Al-Hilaj Mansur. Let me speak of Sarmat. Sarmat was a Sufi mystic. 
He lived during the time of the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb, the last known and powerful emperor. One day, Aurangzeb's sister Zegunisa was inclined towards awakening or inner life. One day, Zegunisa was going somewhere. So, a mystic sitting down, saying loudly, Give me a jug of water and get the Zannat pardoned for yourself. Give me a jug of water and Jannat will be yours. Zebunisa, who was inclined towards the inner self, gave the water to that mystic. A few nights after, Aurangzeb saw a dream. And in that he saw that there is a walled garden and it is written there Zebunisa's Jannat, the heaven of heavenly abode for Zebunisa. He got up immediately and he woke up Zebunisa and asked her what everyone was afraid of the anger of the emperor Aurangzeb. Zebunisa told him that this is how she was going somewhere and a mystic was sitting and say, was saying loudly give me a jug of water and get the Jannat for yourself so I gave him Aurangzeb was not only jealous although he was emperor but when he saw this happen to Zebunisa he wanted the same to happen to him so he went to Sarmat salam and asked him to do the same thing to him. But the mystics are in a different world. You cannot force anything on them. When they are in a state of hal, in a state of fana, in a state of intoxication, they may say something. It's not that they are seeing, it is happening through them. The words come out. But you cannot force, just as love you cannot force. You cannot force me to love you, but under the power you can force me. You can force someone to make love to you, but that is termed by a different name. You cannot force the inner values. So it did not happen and it was around in New Delhi near old Jama Masjid. There is a shrine of Salmat Salam. Those who happen to be in India, they visited the shrine of Salmat Salam. So it happened that Aurangzeb got in anger and in rage he decided he ordered slain by cutting off his head. Salmat was coming down the steps of Jama Masjid. His head was slain. He was holding his head in his hand and walking down the steps of Jama Masjid. Same time, his fellow disciple, his name was Hare Bhare Shah. He came and he said, Salmat, drop the head right there and fall down and leave the world. If you Come down the steps of Jama Masjid, the whole Delhi will be doomed. And when Harebara Shah said that and Salmat heard that, it happened that he dropped there and he died. This is the story of Salmat Salam. So people who had power were ignorant and they have killed Jesus, Socrates, al Hilat Mansur and Salmat. And they became respectable after they had been killed. When they were alive, they were condemned by everyone. Not only by those who were in power, but even by those who were not in power. Those who were not in power condemned them to show the powerful that we are with you. And the powerful condemned them because these people were bringing a new vision, a new life. They were bringing 
the horizon of a new dawn, a world beyond time and space. If it succeeds, there will be no dominion in the world, then there will be human beings very unique, flowering in their own. Look at the prophets. Jesus is the poorest prophet in the entire human history. And now look at the amount of business that is being done in the name of Jesus. We shifted his birthday to celebrate one of the greatest business, Christmas. The man lived in extreme abject poverty, holy prophet, all the others. But these are the people who are worshipped when they are dead. The high priest were all against Buddha, were against Buddha. But the moment, and they tried in every possible way to kill the, these enlightened people. It is powerful who killed them. And it is powerless, the dominated who supported them unwillingly, but very fanatically, because they want to show to everyone, we are more against them than you are. And we are more in favor of powerful than you are. And now the business goes on. Once the man is killed, crucified, poisoned, they are the people who start feeling guilty because from the very beginning they were not ready to kill the man. They had no problem with the man. He was not destroying any of their vested interests. They simply supported the powerful because they were afraid. If they did not support, if they remained quiet, they would be the suspect of supporting the man who has been killed. People were afraid to support Jesus. A disciple of Jesus was in the crowd when Jesus was crucified and he was asked because he looked different from others. He was not from the same place Instead, he was a foreigner and nobody recognized him. He was being asked again and again, Who are you? Do you know this man who is being crucified? And he had to say, No, I have never heard about him. Just seeing that so many people are going this way, just to see what is happening, I have come. Even he cannot admit that he is a follower of Jesus because he knows the result will be another cross for him. So finally when these people are crucified, the people who had supported it unwillingly start feeling guilty. What have we done against such an innocent man who has done no harm to anyone? And whatever he is saying, he was right. They can understand that these people in power are exploiting everything. This is a strange world. You know, people now as kings and queens, and if you follow their ancestors in the beginning, they all were robbers. From where did they get the kingdom? They were robbers who had killed many people, accumulated money, land, declared themselves as the lord of the land and now they have the royal blood. The invasion of India before the Mughal emperor was established attacked and entered India in search of power, money and they are in the lineage of criminals and not an ordinary criminal, instead big ones. They have power, money, it is said that they have a special. The ordinary people have known all along that they are being crushed, murdered slowly. They labor hard and they cannot manage even one meal a day. They produce but all goes to those people who are in power. So when they support these people, it is 
not willingly. That unwillingness, when the man is dead, turns a feeling of guilt. They start feeling that they had been participant. They had participated in this act of criminality. They have not done anything, but they were a silent partners in them. They were showing that they were in support of the powerful man, otherwise they would have been crushed as well. To remove the guilt, worship is arises. Worship is simply a way of removing the guilt, to wash away the guilt. Otherwise, Jesus had not that genius to produce such a big religion. There were hundreds of Jews, far more intelligent, far more scholarly than him. He was just an uneducated young man. But the crucifixion changed the entire situation. That's why it, I say that it is not Christianity, it is the crucifixion was the most important brought into reality, the Christianity. It is crucifixion. Once they crucified him, they made him God. God to all those people who are millions and who have supported the crucifixion. They started feeling guilt. And you can see it if you look deeply. Jesus was killed by the order of the Roman Empire by his viceroy Pontius Pilate in Judea. With the agreement of the high priest of the temple of Jews, today Rome has been the citadel of Christianity for 20 centuries. But the order to kill that man had come from Rome. There was a day when the whole Roman civilization turned into a Christian civilization. Today the Pope has been, has only a small piece of land, only eight square miles. But it is an independent country. It has been shrinking slowly. Once he had the whole of Italy, he was higher than that state. People were killed in Rome are being Christians. Christ was the first one. Then whosoever turned Christian was killed the same way. Hundreds of people were crucified. And this whole crucifixion created so much guilt in the people that a great religion emerged out of that. But such a religion can only be a psychological cover-up. It is not a true religion that has evolved from within. It is simply to cover up your guilt. The more fanatic a religious person is, you can measure his fanatism, how guilty he is feeling, what he is hiding behind. All those religions that emerged out of this kind of approach have not done much, but Christianity became world's biggest religion for the simple reason that not only Christ but many other who had turned Christians were crucified without any trial. And the masses are supporting the powerful people but deep down they felt hurt. But it is happening, they were feeling hurt. What is happening is simply inhuman. And it should not happen, but they are poor. They have no power. They cannot do anything except to worship. A real religion is always of meditation, not of worship. A false religion or false religiosity emerges out of worship. Worship is a psychological method of washing from your hands the blood that you can see on your hands. Even Pontius Pilate, the first thing he did after ordering the crucifixion of Jesus was to wash his hands because he was not willing to kill this innocent man. He had talked to him, he had listened to him in disguise where he was addressing to his disciples 
and he had started loving something in that man. He is innocent. He says some crazy things, but the way he says them is very beautiful. He is uneducated but speaks in parables, in poetry. He does not know much, but whatever he knows, he presents it tremendously beautiful and with great authority. And he is not doing any harm to anyone. If you do not want to listen to him, do not. If you do not want to follow him, do not. And he is not preaching anything dangerous. This was the conviction of Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate wanted Jesus to be freed. He tried to persuade the priest that he should be freed because he seems to be innocent. But Jews were not ready to free him and they committed a great mistake. They are responsible for creating Christianity so all the bloodshed that Christianity has done deep down Jews are responsible for and Christianity has taken revenge in the form of torturing Jews, killing Jews and make them homeless for centuries. It has been going on.